Okay, so let's continue with the third special case, which is, is the direct steam injection or the use of live steam. Okay. Starting from this slide, okay? So in general, um, for a typical distillation column, the heat to the distillation tower is supplied by a reboiler. Okay, a heat of exchanger or a reboiler. So the steam generated by the reboiler or the vapor generated by the reboiler uh, is the one that provides us with the energy. Okay, so compare, uh, okay, you know, just imagine this is your normal distillation column, right? So again, F, then this is your condenser with cooling tower, a uh, cooling uh, medium. Then this is your reboiler, okay. So this is your B. So here um, is your heating element. Okay, for example, commonly used is uh, steam. Okay, however, uh, in the case of injecting live steam, instead of having a reboiler, you replace it with steam straight away. Okay, depends on whether or not it's a full-fledged um, rectification and stripping column or just a stripping column. Uh, but the key, the key here is instead of using reboiler, you inject steam straight away. Okay. Yeah. How do I stop? Ah, I mean, steam is injected straight away uh, at the bottom of the column without having to have a separate reboiler outside the column. So that is the uh, special case that we're dealing with here. Um, the steam does uh, in the reboiler. When you use the reboiler, the steam does not come into direct contact with the boiling solution. Some cases, for some cases, for example, a distillation of aqueous solution of a more volatile component and water, the heat required may be provided by the use of open steam injected directly at the bottom of the tower. So you, you may bubble the steam through at the bottom of the tower instead of having a separate reboiler outside and use the vapor generated by the uh, reboiler to provide the heat. But now you just inject the steam straight away in the, at the bottom of the tower and uh, it comes into contact with the mixture. So the steam can be injected as small bubbles into the liquid in the bottom of the tower. So the vapor leaving the liquid is in equilibrium with the liquid. <laughs> yeah, the vapor leaving the liquid is in equilibrium with the liquid if sufficient contact is obtained. Thus, the reboiler is not needed in this case, in this special case. So you um, pay attention to the inlet and outlet flow rate. So you have feed inlet and you have S at a steam inlet. The outlet, looking at the um, distillation column as a whole, the outlet is D and the uh, outlet is also B. Okay, so Take a look at that when we do the mass balance equation. So this is why I copied this diagram here. So here, um, the overall balance for a live steam distillation column or direct steam injection is inlet is feed plus steam. Okay, F plus S equals to the outlet distillate and the bottom product D plus B. And then we do a component balance of the more volatile component. Okay, so F we have ZF or XF plus S, Y, S. Why? Why is it Y? Because it's steam, it's vapor, so Y. Okay? And equals to DXD plus PXD as usual. However, normally we don't have the more volatile component in the um, vapor and this in the steam. So this one normally YS equals to zero. So thus S times YS is equals to zero. Thus you will just end up with FZF equals to DXT plus BXB. And if from this uh, equation, you can obtain the same uh, ratification operating line as before. However, for the stripping section, for stripping uh, operating line, okay, the material balance is uh, LM. Just look at this one. Okay, This is the stripping section. The stripping section is here. Okay, the control volume is here. Okay, uh, so inlet is LM plus S equals to outlet is VM plus one plus B, and then you put the composition inside to get a component balance. So LM XM plus S times zero. So this term all becomes zero equals to VM plus one, uh, VM plus one blah, blah, blah. Okay, so when you rearrange, it looks like you have the same SOL as before. However, 
when we take into account for the saturated steam entering, um, assuming again constant molar overflow, all vapor flow rate will be the same, right? So S will be equal to uh, Vm plus 1 and thus Lm will be equal to B because now um, unlike the typical distillation column, this is Lm, right? This is Lm, this is B, and this is Vm plus 1. So in this case, if you use a typical distillation column, Lm will not be equal to B. But if you use a steam uh, injection, uh, so you will have uh, Lm, Lm, and B. So Lm, the, the liquid flow rate in the stripping column, will be equal to the liquid flow rate outlet at bottom's liquid. So that's why you have this, uh, where, is, where is it just now? Ah, this one, Lm equals to B. So the original L, uh, SOL will be changed to, instead of Lm over Bm plus 1, so we replace Lm with B. So you have B here over Bm plus 1 is S, steam flow rate. Okay, steam flow rate. So then, uh, in this case, the SOL then passes through the point when y equals to 0, x equals to xp. So that, this is one point of the SOL for stripping, uh, for um, direct steam injection. And then it intersects with the equation, with the line of y equals to x. So when you just try to um, put y equals to x here, you will get x equals to b, x, b over b minus s. Okay, this is the coordinate lah. Okay. Huh. So um, a note here is for every given value of R and XD, the use of open steam rather than a reboiler requires an extra fraction of stage since the bottom step starts below the Y equals to X line. So, you know, when you when you step off the stage, you often require an extra number of stage. You don't have a reboiler. You don't have to take account into account the reboiler stage, but you often need more plates inside the column. Let's do an example to help you illustrate the use of in steam injection in a stripping column. Okay. Okay, read the question. A liquid feed at the boiling point contains 3.3 mole ethanol and 96.7 mole of water. So this is an ethanol water mixture with very small amount of ethanol in the mixture. And that's the top of tree, the top tree of a stripping tower. So this is a combination of a special case. Two special cases in one example. Okay, stripping column only plus steam injection. Saturated steam is injected directly into liquid in the bottom of the tower. The overhead vapor, which is withdrawn, contains 99% of the alcohol in the feed. Assume equimolar overflow or constant molar overflow for this problem. Equilibrium data for mole fraction of alcohol at 101.3 kilopascal absolute is given here. So these are questions A and B. For an infinite number of theoretical steps, calculate the minimum moles of steam needed per mole of feed. Note, be sure to plot the Q line. Part B, using twice the minimum moles of steam, calculate one, the number of theoretical steps needed, and two, the composition of the overhead and bottom products. Okay, let's do one by one. Okay, first of all, we need to illustrate uh, this problem here. Okay. So first, um, draw a column. Okay, so your feed is uh, liquid at its boiling point. So, feed. so we need to select a basis here. Okay, we need to select a flow rate of the feed here. So let's select um, a feed of 100 mole per hour. It can be anything, kilo mole per hour, one mole per hour, doesn't matter. Okay, so XF is 0 0.033. And then you also inject steam, okay, at the bottom of the tower, um, column or tower as mole. Okay, do, let's not deal with the per hour, just mole. Okay, so y s equals to zero. And then um, this is your vapor product V D, and then Y D, and then is your bottom product and X B, the composition. Okay, so first of all, what does it ask you to do? Uh, infinite number. Okay, calculate the minimum mole. So first of all, the X 
S equals to VD. Thus, and then um, F is also equals to B, equals to 100. Okay. Vapor flow rate, vapor flow rate. Liquid flow rate, liquid flow rate. Hmm. So, um, component balance FXF plus SYS equals to VD, YD plus BXB. Then 100 times 0 0.33 plus 0 equals to VD, YD plus uh, B is 100, XB. Okay. Another information we were given is that uh, the overhead vapor which is withdrawn contains 99% of the alcohol in the feed. So that we can use to calculate VDYD. So the VDYD, the amount of alcohol or ethanol at the um, above, at the top product, equals to 99% of what is fed in the feed. Uh, 0 0.99 times 0 0.33. 0 0.033 times 100. So this will give you 3.267 uh, mole of ethanol in the overhead product. Okay. So then you can put this inside here. Okay. As you have, uh, you can solve for XB. So put this inside and solve for XB. Then you will get XB equals to 0 0.000330. So this is your XB. So our work is not done yet. Okay, have a look at our SOL equation for steam injection tower. Y M plus 1 equals to B over S X, uh, XM A minus B over S uh, XB. Okay, then we can put in the numbers that we know. Y M plus 1 equals to 100 over S XM minus uh, 100 over S XB is 0 0.000330. 0. Okay, what do we do now? What do we do now? We need to plot a graph to get the minimum S. Okay, so um, recall the question first for A, it asks for the minimum. So let's put S min here. Okay, as mean. So the analogy to get as mean is to, um, to compare it with how do we get R mean. So in R mean just now, uh, we want to find out what is R mean. We, we manipulate the, uh, what do you call this, the gradient of your linear equation y equals to mx plus c to find a point where the limit of your um, graph can be. So that's uh, where we need to do this. Okay, first you plot the equilibrium line. So this, this is your VLE. The scale here is a bit weird because uh, from the table, okay, you, from the table you can see that the number here is very small. Okay, number here is very small. So just adjust the scale. You need to adjust the scale. Okay, uh, otherwise it will be too small for you to see. But luckily we are using Excel, so it's easier for us to adjust the scale. So first plot the VLE uh, line, so, and then this orange line is y equals to x. So it doesn't look like the typical 45 degree line that you used to have because of the scale of x and y, the different scale. Okay. And then um, the gray line here is your q line. Okay. This is your q line. So q line because uh, q equals to 1 because it's a saturated liquid at its boiling point and uh, x here is 0 0.033. Okay. So that is uh, our q line. So now from our operating line, a stripping section operating line, you have this equation um, 100. Okay, just put actual numbers now. 100 over S min XM minus 100 over X min XB. Um, well, it, okay, my computer starting to heat up now. So just bear with me here. 0. 0 0.03, you know, the XB here, lah, okay? So, um, what I do is, okay, here is the point of XB, uh, XB, okay? That is the point of XB. And I put the point here to touch where the Q line would touch the equilibrium line, 
Okay, so that's how I get this green line and I call the green line here as the operating line at the minimum steam flow rate. Okay, okay. So I also did this using Excel. Mm, okay. Yeah, operating line at is uh, at s minimum so when y equals to zero you will get x equals to 0 0.00033 okay so that is one point of your uh, of your operating line sol so that is the this point here okay and the part you connect this dot to this dot and this dot is the intersection between Q line and the VLE so that's where you get this uh, green line there so that green line will give you the slope of the SOL at minimum steam flow rate okay so you calculate what is the SOL uh, the, 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 the gradient of this uh, green line and then you, you will manage to get the the S minimum Okay, try that and uh, yeah, you can uh, try that and uh, I give you the answer as minimum will be 12.1 mole, okay, 12.1 mole. Another alternative is that this is a graphical representation on how you get this uh, as min. Another uh, alternative is uh, you use this equation here because um, okay now you know that it is uh, this is the SOL, okay. So if you have the coordinates of x and m uh, and y, and you just um, substitute the coordinate of x and y into this SOL equation, you can solve for as min. Uh, analytically as well okay so based on this uh, have a look again at your uh, this one okay so this is uh, yd you can solve for yd mm, okay you can solve for yd will be equal to 0 0.270 I, I missed this step actually okay it's because um yeah okay, this is uh, yd is 0 0.270 from the graph also so here you can um, solve for, you can put it into the equation, 0 0.270, and ym is uh, 0 0.033, this point, okay? And then you will get the S-mean. So S-mean, the answer is 0 point, uh, 12.1 mole, but this is using a basis of F equals to 100 mole. Uh, go back to the question, it actually asks for the ratio, okay? Uh, it asks for the minimum moles of steam needed per mole of feed. So what you do is just to div uh, divide, lah, okay? So S min over feed is 12.1 over 100. So you get the answer is 0 0.1 to 1 mole of steam, mole steam per mole feed. Okay, so that is our answer for part one. Next, so we do part B. Okay, now, now that you got the minimum moles of steam, uh, calculate number of theoretical steps needed and the composition of the overhead and bottom products. Okay, so here we we have as mean um, using the basis of F equals to 100 mole. You get as mean equals to 12.1. So when you do um, twice, okay, now your S is two times S min, meaning two times 12.1 equals to 24.2 mole. So when you now specify your uh, S, uh, then you can adjust your operating line. Okay, so now your operating line becomes YM plus 1 equals to um, 100 over 24.2 XM x yeah, alpha uh, minus 100 over 24.2 times your xb 0 0.00033 so this is your uh, operating line y equals to mx plus c you can simplify it and then you, when you 
get this, you can plot this uh, blue line here, i.e. the new operating line when S equals to 2 times S main. And uh, from that, you can step off the stage, okay? Uh, how do we step off the stage? Where do we actually uh, define this? Uh, so from here, you need to solve for YD first. Okay, solve for YD. YD you will get equal to 0 0.135. Okay. And uh, yeah, you need to do the necessary material balance. And um, that's why you start from here. You step off the stages. One, two, three, four, five. And you stop until 0 0.00. Oops, oops, what happened here? Um, 0 0.00033. So you, uh, the answer is five stages, okay? Huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it actually. So that is the example for live steam injection plus uh, stripping section. Okay, finally, the final special case is the fourth one, uh, side stream. I'm not going to spend too long here because uh, we have a video example already which you can watch from the YouTube. Okay, so side stream is where you uh, withdraw the liquid product somewhere in the middle of the column before reaching the top of the column, okay? So in some cases, intermediate product um, are removed because you require different composition. So an example here, you just um, take somewhere uh, in the middle here to take out the saturated liquid at its boiling point at that stage, okay? So here, what is affected is the material balance equation. So this is an example of side stream to withdraw products at different stages. This is, uh, I'm sure you know, fractured fractionating tower, fractional distillation, okay? Crude oil will produce different uh, components at different boiling points. So you want to withdraw each of these products at different stages of the uh, distillation column. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the ROL for a column with a side stream in the rectifying section. This is only looking at the uh, side stream in the rectifying section. Sometimes you may have side stream uh, at the stripping section. So it, 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 the key is just to adjust accordingly lah, the material balance. Okay. So in this case, you withdraw from this tray. So this is called O and XO. So looking at the control volume, the dash box here, the dash line here. So inlet is VS plus one. Okay, inlet equals to outlet. So outlet is uh, LS, okay, plus um, D plus O. So O is the mole per hour of saturated liquid removed as the side stream. And since the liquid stream is saturated, uh, yeah, just look at the liquid stream only. LN equals to, LN equals to LS plus O. And uh, the vapor flow rate is not affected. And then we can do from here, we can do a material balance on the more volatile component. Just put the composition of the more volatile component inside. You get this equation. And from that, you can rearrange for Y S plus 1. So S here is the side stream stage. Okay. So here is the um, ROL for the side stream stage. So if you have that side stream, you will have um, two operating lines at the rectification column. So this is ROL at condenser. This is ROL at the side stream. And it is the ROL at the side stream that will intersect with the Q line. Okay, so maybe the ROL at the condenser, if you further it, I mean, if you try to complete the line, it will intersect here, but it doesn't matter because this section does not intersect with the Q line. Okay, so the ROL at the side stream is the one that intersects with the Q line and also intersects with the ROL at the condenser. So uh, the key point is the McKay-Taylor diagram must show where the points or lines intersects and uh, from which, starting from which stage that the withdrawal is being taken uh, from the column. Okay. 
So um, you, uh, if you don't if you don't get this intersection nicely, then you can adjust the reflux ratio because uh, this is only estimation lah. Okay. So here, for example, for column with side stream product, you can read the question here and you can go to the YouTube link here to see the step-by-step uh, -step solution on how to get uh, the optimal stage for the side stream and how many stages are there in the column with the side stream product. Okay, so just click on this YouTube link and go through the problem and try to do it on your own after that. So um, to, to help you to do the problem on your own, I give you the VLE uh, or TXY diagram for methanol and uh, water system at 180 m. Then you can try to do the example on your own. So um, apart from whatever we have uh, covered in this lecture, there are more variations to distillation processes which we don't have the uh, time and coverage to do so in this course. So what we learn is only the normal distillation process, but there are other, this is not an exhaustive list, but these are the ones that are non-typical, practically used in the industry. Azeotropic distillation, extractive distillation, reactive distillation, short pass vacuum cryogenic and pressure swing distillation. So um, this one, uh, you may need to study each of these depending on your IDP later, but the basics of distillation column and how to calculate the lines, number of stages, equilibrium data, you already know from the course. Okay, so um, I, that's all the lecture for this week. Um, and you may need to reflect on what you have learned from the lectures today. Uh, so you, you should be able to understand or um, to, to answer all of these questions, okay? So reflect if you don't if you cannot answer this question yet then you may need to replay some parts of the video all right um thank you guys see you later